Hi, I'm Kat. I'm at the Fire Mountain Gems and Bees Jewelry Design Studio, and I'm going to show you how to make the glass caterpillar bracelet. I'm ready to jump in. Are you? For this project, you're going to need a couple of different materials. You're going to want to go ahead and have some large aluminum jump rings, your steel clasp, and some smaller steel rings to go ahead and put towards the end of the clasp. We're going to use the large glass rings. We're going to use another size jump ring just slightly smaller than the first one and you can use any kind of jump ring here aluminum copper whatever you choose i chose to use the annealed steel in this project and then you'll need the size six mayuki seed beads let's get going to start go ahead and open up your smaller jump ring and put on a glass ring and close the ring. You're going to add one more of those to the same glass ring. Making sure you don't go through the previous jump ring. Close it. And that's what we're going to need to create many of. We need about 30 to 35 of those, depending on your total length, between seven and a half and eight inches. And once we have a bunch of those, we're then going to connect them all together. I'm gonna to keep going and make another couple of these. We want to go ahead and put the glass ring on the smaller jump ring, close it, and then add another to the same glass ring. So each glass ring has two jump rings. We've completed the first part of making the units for this bracelet where we have a bunch of these single glass rings with the two jump rings going through. Again, you're going to need anywhere from 30 to 35, maybe slightly more, depending on your desired finish length. And we're going to go ahead now and connect these. We take the same size jump ring and we pick up two of the units through only the jump rings. So we slide on the pairs of jump rings so that we have two units on the open jump ring and close the open jump ring. Then let's lay it down because we need to position the glass rings. For the one on this side, I'm going to go ahead and pull it over, folding it over the very center jump ring. And once I've done that, I can slightly spread the pair, the end pair of jump rings apart and let it flatten down. And that's the start. I'm going to do a similar thing on the other side. I'm going to take this one and push it under. So what I did was fold it under the center jump ring this time. Instead of on top, I fold it under. This side under, this side top. We have this. And the end rings happen to open up for me naturally. And I always want to remember to open up that pair of jump rings at the very end every time I've turned a glass ring. And what we have here is this single jump ring is what we just added to connect those two units and all we've done is move the glass and separate out the jump rings so that it lays flatter and we need to continue working in one direction so that we can keep the flatness all the way through and make that length twice your bracelet size let's keep going we're going to take a new Jump ring, same size. We're going to pick up a unit through the jump rings only. And I'm going to grab this entire thing. 
I like to turn it so that I, I'm kind of grabbing it at the most flat point that I can through the center and it's very flat in my fingers and these are spread out for me and then I'm going to go up through the one closest to me and down through the one furthest away following the curve of the glass. I'm following exactly the same curve of the glass and I need to move that back so I have room to close the jump ring and then we have to replace this. We place it back down and it looks a little jumbled now but what did we do before? Well depending on which way you have it turned you're going to need to flip either the jump rings over or under the bracelet. I know that if I flip this ring over it's not going to be flat and we already talked about how we want a flat bracelet there's no need for me to flip that glass ring that way it's not going to make it flat it's going to make a little triangle so that's my clue that I automatically know I have to go under to get a flatter weave. I need to bring that glass ring all the way under. And what did I say before is that we have to always separate that final pair. The final pair of jump rings has to be separated in order for us to see the flat pattern. And so we have more work to do here. Would we flip this over or under? Well, if we flip it under, let's just see. If we flip it under, where'd it go? We can't see it. We've created what's called a gridlock. We don't want a gridlock. That's a different weave. It's a fun one to make, though. What we do want is that glass to come up on top and fill the row the same way. So we let it loose again, and we bring it up. Basically, if you can see more of that center ring, you know that a glass ring should be on top of it. So we flip it up, and we separate the bottom two rings. Almost like opening the pages of a book, maybe a book that was upside down in this case. And now everything's flatter. Your newest center ring was this one the one that you use to join the two units. So we're ready to do another connection. We put on a unit through the jump rings only. We grab the entire thing in the most flat way. This time again the glass rings are kind of pointing out and away toward my left so that I have a good grip and I go up through the one closest to me, up through the one closest, and then down through the one furthest away following the curve of the glass. Let it loose a little bit and it's already starting to take shape throughout. Let it loose, close the jump ring, lay everything back down. If it looks jumbled all you have to do is think how am I going to flatten this back out? How am I going to flatten it? Well, let me start pushing on some rings and look, it's doing it for me. But hey, there's those end rings that I already know I need to open up like a book. I need to open the page, right? And I haven't done anything here yet. What I need to do here is I don't want to go under because then I'll lose where the glass ring is. I won't see it. I know that I need to turn that glass ring over on top this way kind of open the page to my left so that it continues that flat weave and then open up the final pair of jump rings and the ring that you just added is this one right here and you want to continue that length again double what your bracelet length is Keep going. Once you get more proficient with this pattern, you can actually, as soon as you close the ring, continue holding it, put your thumb on that ring you just closed, 
bring the glass ring up towards your thumb and tuck it right away and open. Open those final rings and keep going. I like to hold it in my hand so that I don't lose my spot and I have it marked the whole time because I've been pinching it with my thumb. So again, I'm still pinching. It doesn't matter what's going on behind my thumb. I take my new unit on a new open jump ring, go up, down, close, and before I let go, after I've closed this ring, before I let go, I just grab and pinch right away. Grab and pinch. Bring the glass ring towards my thumb. Pinch it. Open. Keep going. I've completed the length, which is almost twice my wrist size. So it should be extra, extra long when you've completed your length. And you should have a glass ring at either end. And what we want to do is kind of set this flat and make sure everything's fairly lined up. We're going to pick it up a few times, but what I want to point out is the direction of the glass rings. So we are looking for the glass rings to be pointing out and away from us. They are pointing out and away from us while the side jump rings are pointing up towards us. So glass rings out away from you, the side rings up toward me. And what we want to get going is the sides, which is half Persian three and one. And we work on one side only. So the first side that we're gonna work on we're going to go entirely down. And the path that this ring goes through is three rings, hence the half Persian three in one. And the three rings we're going to go through are the first three, but we come up through the third ring down. So we come up through the third ring down with our next largest jump ring size up through two, up through three, up through two. Then we hold, slide a bead on, very carefully bring that glass ring that flipped downward, we want to flip it back into position so that glass ring that flipped downward, we have to very carefully push it back behind the other glass rings and then open up the two jump rings like a book. And as we're holding this here, we turn our wrist, we turn it, turn it, turn it, so that the leading edge goes completely down into the first ring. And that's the path that we want. That's what allows this jump ring to stick up vertically, pretty much perpendicularly to the bracelet. So again, we came up through two, which is two rings, the third and the second ring, and then we put a bead on and we turned our whole wrist so that the leading edge of the jump ring goes down through the top jump ring there, number one. And then we can close and I'll show you what it looks like. And these are slightly bigger. Okay. And it looks like this. And it should kind of stick up and slightly lay down to the side. Now the thing with this weave is as we go down, it gets tighter. And then when we put on the second side, it'll get extremely tight. And that is what allows for this curved shape. And this curve is all created by adding in those little side rings, which is what we're doing now. Let's keep going. This time, we're going to come down one more ring to the fourth ring, the fourth jump ring on the end, right at the edge of the bracelet, the fourth jump ring. Essentially, the one I know I need to go through is one down from the one that I started with before, 
one down. It's unattached to any side ring yet. There's no, no attachment yet. I'm creating it by coming up through the fourth ring, up through the third ring. What do I do? I gotta put a bead on. It's always up through two, down through one. Put a bead on, very carefully turn my wrist, and this time I'm gonna come down through the second jump ring, but I have to make sure that I do not go through the side ring that I just entered. I don't wanna go down through that. I actually am coming down through the side jump ring here. Let me do that so we can see it right there. And you stay in front of the previous side jump ring that you've already completed. And that's how the beads will line up next to each other. Let's close it and look at it. So we can see that we have the two perfectly lined up along the side. And if we turn this here, we can see that we've got them going through these four jump rings here, only these side jump rings, only these steel ones here are what these ones are going through, not through each other. That's really important because if you cross this one through this one, it'll lock up the entire weave and you can't even continue down. Let's do another one. We're gonna pick it up, same exact orientation, and this time we need to go through one that's the next one that's unattached, which is this guy down here. This one's already attached to something going on up here. This is the loose one. So we come up through that one, which is the fifth ring down. We also come up through the fourth one, because it's always up two, down one. We put our bead on, and then we curve our wrist and come down through, basically closest to the bead, down through the ring that's closest to the previous bead at this point, and continue to kind of corkscrew it through, pull it through, and stay in front of the previous edging rings that you've done. Stay in front of it, don't go through it. Let's close it. You're gonna continue all the way down the weave until you get almost to the end, leave one section undone. So if we look at it, and don't worry if this first little bead slides out of place, when we put the clasp on, it'll push it back into the proper position. So don't worry about what the first one's doing. If we look at it, we can see that it's starting to create that curve already. And if you look at it from the side, all of the edging rings are in front of each other. And all of the beads are lined up, everything looks good, and we just wanna keep going all the way down. Now I'm gonna come up through the sixth one, up through the fifth one, put a bead on, and go down through the fourth one that's closest to the bead. and it's starting to get a little tighter. This is when you adjust your pliers and your grip. So it's okay to have a grip where your hands are slightly up so that you can get in there and close the ring. That's gonna become even more important on the second side when it's tighter. But go ahead and adjust your grip as needed. You may need to have your hands up here as opposed to here or here. Okay. Over here is probably what's gonna happen more often. Okay, so we've completed that one. Got four beads in there. Let's keep going. Up through two, put a bead on, down through one. Curve it around. Remember to curve it around or else you really won't have enough room to, to close the jump ring. And for this project, you can study it on a mat. The reason you would wanna maybe do that as you're closing is so that um, if you're closing it too far out, um, 
too far this way, you may actually slightly open the jump rings, whereas this is kind of bracing it a little bit so that you have more leverage to close it. Um, I, I, I just prefer that technique. You have to see what works for you. Up through two, put a bead on, down through one. And you can already see that it's curving quite a bit and it's going to curve quite a bit more. That also has to do with the thickness of the glass that you're using. Different batches of glass may be slightly thinner, slightly thicker, and for this project you may need to slightly adjust the inner diameter of this ring size. Make it bigger if your glass is a little thicker, make it slightly smaller if your glass is quite thin. Working with the glass rings for about 10 years, I've learned you just kind of keep going. Keep trying to figure out what's going to work with them. Come up through two. Put a bead on, down through one. And that's pretty much it. So I'm at the very end now. I've completed all of the side edging on one side. We've gone all the way down and I've kind of left this little last one loose like I said earlier. And you'll see why as we go ahead um, after we finish the other side and put the clasp on you'll understand why we left it a little loose. And we're ready to go ahead and start the second side. So in order to start the second side we actually want to go to the beginning. So we don't want to start the second side from where we ended. We want to go all the way back to the beginning and you can check to make sure what your beginning was by looking that the glass rings are angled out and away from you. So we go back to the beginning and we want to turn the weave so that we're still working on what would be my right side and but we're going to be working all the way in this direction. We're basically now working away from us instead of towards us and that allows us to create the mirror image that we want. So the new path on the second side is coming up through one and going down through two and that's going to tie up everything and create an exact mirror image. If we were to turn this over or start from this side it'd be a little bit trickier how to get in there and what happens if we were to start at our very end what happens is it's hard to place the side rings behind each other as you're going in that direction. You would, these side rings would each need to tuck underneath each other and that's way too difficult from this side. It's far easier from this side to let them lay, the side rings lay on top of each other as you go instead of trying to tuck them under each other. So in order to get that started, we Unfold this. If the, if the little pages of the book are folded, unfold them so that we can see that jump ring at the end. And we come up through one. So we're doing the opposite path. Up through one, put a bead on, and then go down through the very next two side jump rings. Very carefully here. It's tighter. So very carefully, I've gone through the second one, there it is through there, and then I also need to dip down through the third one. So I've gone up through one and down through the next two jump rings. And you'll notice it's getting tight. It's doing the fun curl that I love. Okay, and what it looks like is this. 
So don't worry that this bead is kind of moving around on its own. We can push them back this way and it'll look more lined up. Remember when we put on the clasp at the very end, it'll force the beads to come to this side and they won't travel as much. So from the side, we've it's essentially the same exact, exact path, but I didn't start by going up through two. I just started going up through one and down through two to create that mirror image. It'll be more obvious once we get a few more in. So we're gonna take a new one, and this time we're going to come up through the second side ring. And when you come up through the second side ring right here, you do not want to also pick up the edging ring that you just added. So leave this guy alone. You need to stay in front of it. But you do want to come up the second side ring and you stay um, away from the bead. So you're working in that direction. We want to stay in front of the bead. And we put a new bead on as it came up through one, put a new bead on and then very carefully come down through the side jump ring closest right here. That's number three, come down. I'm just curving a little bit here and then I need to bring the rest of the weave up towards that jump ring so that I can continue to dip down through one more. And it's tight there. You can see the weave doesn't even want to move. It's stiff. It's quite tight. So here I really have to adjust the ring all the way through and very carefully and you'll need your thin nose pliers here and a very high um, arms on this one so you can get at it at a high angle. Then you very carefully close it. And these rings, because I'm closing them in a tight spot, they do tend to get that overlap where one side is higher than the other. So then you just have to adjust your, your wiggling back and forth. Um, maybe pull one side higher than the other to make it more even. They're very prone to the overbite when you're closing them this way. Let's do another one. After we take a look at this, we can see now that it's more lined up. We have that mirror image that I was talking about, right? And so on the side, each of the new edging rings are in front of each other. So let's do another one. We turn it this way because we're working in that direction now. And we're going to come up through the one closest to the last bead. So up through the side ring that's closest to the bead and we kind of push that bead out of our way because we want to work in front of the bead. Put a new bead on. Again, curve our hands and come down through the very next two side rings. One, and then you kind of have to wiggle to get that other one to come down. So I am through, but I have to kind of corkscrew the ring, kind of twist it to be able to find room to close. And it's tight. You can see the whole weave just keeps curving up on you. Get in there, dig in there, and close it. You see my, my hands and arms are at a high up angle here, like a V-shape. And I check to make sure I don't have any strong overbites. See, we're getting there. And then you work your way all the way down. So it's much easier to work all the way down one whole side because you're doing the same repetitive thing over and over. And then switch your brain and go ahead and do the mirror image, which is now up through one, down through two, up through one, down through two. We're gonna continue. Okay. All right. I want. I was gonna see what Damien had too. Damien or Damon? Damien. Yeah, I said it right. Like the omen, like the movies. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see. We're almost at the very end here. 
We have just a couple more edging rings to add. And as this is very tight and very curled, we have to keep adjusting the way we enter in these edging rings. So I'm coming up through the one with the bead. And I also don't have my jump ring open very wide. I can even maybe make it a little less wide. Just far enough to put the bead on. And I have to be very careful here. It's so tight that I really need to scoot backwards with the ring. I need to come backwards quite a bit to where the bead is almost about to fall off in order to find enough room to still get down through the next outer ring. And you see that I'm struggling a little bit to get it through. It feels a little tight. That's because it's curling so much. The ring is easily going to go over it, but not necessarily in it. We want it to go in, so we have to push this glass up. Push this glass up into the curve so that we have more room when the jump rings come closer to the new one. And see, now I have more room there. I go down. And if it's still too tight, which is normal, if it still feels too tight, try and really, really carefully turn your wrist and dig in there. There. We got through one. I had to use my fingernail to kind of pull this back onto the ring that I'm, I'm trying to go through. And bring this one that I still need to go down through too. So bring this one up towards it. And if it feels like it won't go on, again, you gotta push these glass rings up into the curve so that it kind of scrunches it all up. And then I'm able to go down, down through that one. It's very tight right here at the end. Let's do one more. See, it's making this perfect little spiral on its own. Come up, put the bead on. Very carefully bring it back, bring the ring backward to where the bead almost wants to fall off. And I'm pushing underneath on the glass rings, making them bend into the curve more so that it brings the jump ring closer and very, very carefully to where the bead's almost gonna come off. I have my leading edge and I'm bringing it close. And if it still feels a little too tight, I have to use my fingernail. There, snapped in there. Bring my fingernail if I need to, to allow it to slide on. And this one, if it's still not feeling like it can slide on, again, I push up the glass. I'm, I basically am curving it more, and it allows that ring to come closer, the one that I still needed to push down through. We can close it. We have this, this hanging part down here. We're going to leave that alone for right now. And what I've done is prepare the clasp. We have two tiny jump rings on every loop of the clasp. Two tiny steel rings, just for strength, to go with the steel slide clasp. And we need to use the small clasp rings at least have them ready to go because we're going to have to balance some things in our hands to get this ready here. And we're going to go back to the beginning. So we need all this clasp stuff prepped for us. We go back to the beginning and we actually will end up removing this final glass ring. We do that so that it has a very um, defined uh, end. And when we remove this glass ring, we'll be removing the very two side rings, one on each side. But replacing these side rings 
with these smaller ones. So that does sound like a lot of information all at once, and it is. We're going to do it in steps here. So in order to go ahead and take that glass ring off, this has to be opened up. So very carefully, find your closure. Go ahead, find your closure and open that up very carefully and slide the glass ring off. I need to open it a little more because it's tight there. Slide the glass ring off. Now, as you're sliding it off, try not to come out of where you were in this center ring down here. Just slide the glass ring off only. And you see how I've kept the space here? I've kept that space. This is my trick that I show students. So although we are about to take this off, I slightly close it because I want to use that as a placeholder. I need to see where that ring is going through so that when I said I want to replace it with a smaller one to bring a, a nice tight end to the bracelet, when I want to see where it's supposed to go, if I took that ring out, I'd be pretty lost. I wouldn't remember the path that it was in. So this is the ring that I just kind of slightly closed. The bead wants to move around on you, yes. And I'm going to go through with that slightly smaller clasp ring and follow the same exact path. Let me line that up for you to see. The same exact path as that, as that larger one underneath. We're going to remove that once we have this smaller one in place. So it's open enough. At this point, this is when I put my prepared clasp on. There's a lot going on here, but we don't want to lose our spot, which is why we have all these rings in the spot. So I've slid the clasp through the two tiny jump rings. I have my placeholder there. I'll take that out as soon as I close this smaller jump ring. Close it very carefully here, steady hands, very carefully. Close it. Now I can remove that extra ring that was my placeholder that's now jutting out from the bracelet. I can remove it completely. Okay, so what we have, let's get a good view here. What we have is the smaller clasp ring kind of pushing the bead, like I said, it pushes the bead now back away from the edge and it's connected directly to the clasp and there's no glass ring in the way so we have like a nice straight flat just slightly tapered end. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. So here what I would do is take my smaller jump ring and put it over my placeholder before I do anything, before I take the glass out, before I take the placeholder out, I want to go in with my smaller clasp ring right away so I don't lose my spot and I can see what I'm doing. Okay, and actually if you're going in from the left side, sometimes it helps to actually pull the left side of the jump ring towards you so that your leading edge is further down away from you. And I'm going to dig in exactly where the placeholder is. Okay, so I'm going through this one, uh, the edging ring, and I'm circling around through that very center jump ring. Okay, and I have it through. And although there's a lot going on back here, I want to bring that clasp, the clasp and the tiny rings up to the very small jump ring. You're going to have to carefully hold it here, I'll show you. And get both of those little tiny clasp rings on and close it. So I've gone through and I got the little tiny clasp rings on and I can close this jump ring now and then take off my placeholder and the hanging glass ring. Curve it around as needed. 
And actually, the less open you have this jump ring, the easier it'll be to close. Very carefully, because you don't want to slip and uh, then perhaps maybe open up a bunch of jump rings. So I've got it in place. Now all I need to do is remove that placeholder and that'll allow the glass ring to pop right off. So let's find our closure and remove this and then see what it looks like. Carefully, because you don't want to pry anything open that's already there. What I've done is replaced those larger jump rings with the smaller ones right here. We took out the glass so that basically we're ending all on jump rings right there. There should be no glass ring in the way. And the beads will stay now in the position that they're in. So we need to complete this on the other side of the bracelet. We're at the very end. We can go ahead and put on our final edging rings. The reason we left this just slightly loose in the beginning and undone is so that I could show you this whole section is going to be removed, but we have to put on our edging rings first. I did want to just point out that this whole final section will be removed. Let's go ahead and put the edging on, just as we've done before. On the first side, we went up through two, up through two, put a bead on, and then down through one, that's the easier side. And this is gonna come off momentarily. And then on the other side, we went up through one, get the bead out of the way, put a bead on, reposition this, and then come down through two, down through two, okay. And as I remove this, we just need to note that the new smaller jump ring is basically going to go under and so that it follows the stack that we have going on here. It needs to go under. Basically you're going to have your new smaller jump ring here and it's going to go through this edging ring and also through this very center ring that's all the way back here where there's no glass. All the way back here. So once we remove the glass we have more room to get through that little section there. So let's do that. On one side we'll remove The jump ring, just find our closure. There it is. Remove this and very carefully just kind of look and notice what path that ring is taking so that you can repeat the path with the smaller one. Remove very carefully, it's like your placeholder there, but this time it's going to be kind of in the way, so we have to come out. We have to come out and you're just scooping from underneath, so through the edging ring and through the center. And before I close, I need to bring the clasp up to that point. So I'm going to slide on the tiny loops of the clasp. Very carefully, I got through and I need to twist it to have, find room to close that jump ring. So it's gone through the two tiny clasp rings. Very carefully close it. There's very little room there, so that's why we don't leave the placeholder. Okay, now we're ready to do the final side here. We can open this up and get rid of it. Okay, we're going to take it out completely, but we're looking at 
the path that it's taking. It's going through an edging ring and it's going through the very center, the very center jump ring. Just those two jump rings. So we take that out and here's where you're, you may want to open your smaller jump ring so that the left side is facing you and you have your leading edge pointing down so you can get through. You're going to go through the edging ring. Yeah, and it's tricky and tight here. You're going to go through the edging ring. And then you're also going to come up through the very center. In there. There it is. And do you see how it matches what's going on on this side? So now that we're up through the center, very carefully, we're going to continue this. This is actually the leading edge now. We're going to, I'm going to push that leading edge through the two tiny clasp rings here. Push that leading edge through, very carefully hold it and twist the jump ring around so that I can get it closed. See, I lost one of my tiny guys. So very carefully, we got to bring it back. Get it on there. There. <laughs> I need to do that part over. It's like too much of a struggle to get it on. Oh, actually, this Just way. Just let them know it can be difficult if you try. Okay. It can be difficult to get this guy in. This is another way that you can do it so that you have that leading edge pointing towards the clasp rings. Loosen that up and go in this way. There you go. Right in. Reverse your grip so that you have room to close the jump ring. Very carefully, steady hands with the small jump ring. Go ahead and close it. Let's take a look. So we have on here the clasp rings going on top, on here the clasp rings going under. The reason we want that is because if we look at it from the side, then they're all lined up in exactly the same way. And this clasp here will take up almost a full inch of space. So you're all done. The trick to this bracelet, putting it on, since it's so uh, swirly and curvy, is very gently coming at the small part of your wrist and kind of tucking it on and very gently wrapping it up so that you can bring the two ends together. You don't want to pull this bracelet apart or away, the ends away from each other for any reason, because that will pry open the jump rings that are all done. So when you're ready to put your bracelet on, you're kind of going at the small part of your wrist and then very, very carefully twirling it and letting that, that end naturally come up. So it, it'll make a bangle, you know, it'll be like a cuff-like bracelet. And then we can close it. The glass caterpillar. You worked your way through it and you did it. And there you have it. Go pick out your colors at firemountaingems.com and make it your own.